Well, he was convicted of crimes that go back half a century. We're talking about Douglas Badger. And this morning, a placement hearing took place for the sexually violent predator. The California Department of State Hospitals wants to put him in a home in the Mount Helix neighborhood. But people living there are against this idea. News 8's Allison Royal joining us live now with more on what happened in court here today. Allison? Well, good morning, Netta and Eric. So even people who could not be inside of this downtown San Diego courtroom wanted to make their voices heard. I'm going to give you a look at them right now. They're here on the corner of Union and C downtown, and they are protesting the possibility that a sexually violent predator could be placed in a home in the unincorporated neighborhood of El Cajon. So this has been going on for the last two hours. It started at 9 o'clock this morning. Many people have spoken to this judge via Zoom, sharing stories of children walking to school or friends' houses right where Badger would live, as well as various elementary schools, licensed daycare facilities, and parks nearby the home. Some sexual assault survivors, as well as the parents of a veteran with PTSD living across the street, called in with emotional statements, crying, pleading with the judge to not place any SVPs in the neighborhood. SVP stands for sexually violent predator. Many people and local government leaders expressed frustration in court today that the El Cajon neighborhood seems to have a disproportionate amount of sexual offenders placed there, as opposed to, say, wealthier neighborhoods with a greater number of people living there. Badger's last offense was in 1991, but with a violent criminal history dating back to the 1970s, as you two mentioned. He has petitioned many times to be released into the community, but there has often been met with opposition. However, this is a complex issue because Badger has served his time in the California system. His defense and treatment team said it has a strategy in place to prevent sexually violent offenders from reoffending. According to Liberty Healthcare, these strategies include a 24-hour GPS monitoring device, alcohol and drug testing, and then continuing his decades of sex offender treatment. He will have treatment appointments where he will be escorted by a health care professional. And remember, he is also 78 years old, which some have argued makes him less likely to reoffend. But some people pointed out in court today that even though he's 78 years old, anybody is still dangerous if they can use a weapon, which he had done in some of his previous attacks that he was convicted for. This is what one anonymous community member had to tell us in front of the courthouse earlier this morning. We would be living in fear. The children would no longer be able to walk to school. There's no school bus. The children have to walk to school. They would no longer be able to do that. They would no longer be able to play safely in the streets. And everybody in the neighborhood would be uneasy and concerned. And the judge is not expected to make a decision today. Definitely a lot of testimony to take into account before making a decision of this gravity. And there's also another sexual offender that's right behind him in line is also expected to move into that very same home in that unincorporated part of El Cajon. The judge did say that he actually got in his car and drove around the area of the home to see what kind of vantage points the offender would have, see kind of what schools and what daycare facilities are nearby, and get a better feel for what the community has at stake here. That end, Eric.